Now let's have a look at some of the remaining status bar options. So I'll start with the selection cycling option which is quite helpful in selecting the overlapping geometries. Now in this case we have this drawing and in this drawing there may be certain geometries which could be overlapping. So I'll zoom into this area and now if you notice clearly we have some overlapping objects here so some of these objects are overlapping on each other now in order to clearly identify that you can take help of selection cycling so you can click on this selection cycling option on the status bar to turn it on and if you are not able to see this option selection cycling then click on the customization and click this selection cycling option so make sure that this selection cycling option is active now once it is active go to the status bar turn it on and now move back to the drawing area now whenever a overlapping object will be found in the drawing you will see this overlapping square icon right beside the cursor now simply click and you'll see a list of all of these overlapping objects. So you can move between the first and second object and if the list has more object, you can select those objects also and a preview will be visible in the drawing area also, as you can see here also. So you can select the objects and you can either erase them or you can do other modifications. In this case, I'll simply erase it. And now we can join both of these endpoints. So I'll use line tool and I'll join these two endpoints. Now we have a clean geometry here. Now similarly, let's move to this part of the drawing and here we have this circle. Now obviously when I move my cursor to this circle, there is no overlapping icon of selection cycling, but when I move it to this circle, we have this overlapping icon. So that indicates that we have two circles or more than two circles on the same center. So let's click here and we obviously have these two arcs or the circles so i'll select the second one which is obviously not the full arc and it's completely redundant geometry which is not required so let's erase it and here we have it a clean geometry so in this way you can use selection cycling to make selections of overlapping objects now let's have a look at other status bar options. So I'll go to this customization and I'll select this coordinates option. So as soon as you activate the coordinates option, you'll see on the status bar here, we have these three coordinates visible, the X coordinate, Y coordinate and the Z coordinate value. And these values will change with the movement of your cursor. So whenever I move my cursor, the coordinates will update itself and you can see the real time coordinate values from the drawing area so in this way you can make a clever approximation of the coordinate simply by moving your cursor to that area now let's look at the next option which is units so once again i'll go to the customization and i'll activate this units status bar option and i'll also turn off this coordinates now when you turn on this units option, you'll see this unit status bar, which shows the current display unit, which is decimal in this case. So right now, all the dimensions will be shown in decimal units. So that simply means whatever the geometry you make, it will be shown as decimals. So I'll check some of the properties of these objects. So I'll select this circle here and now right click and I'll go to properties. And now let's have a look at this property palette. Now here we have some of the properties related to this arc or this geometry. For example, we have the radius as 120, 188 start angle that will be degrees and the area in square units and total arc length. So all of these values are currently shown as decimal values. Now let's press escape key and let's change this decimal to architectural. And now let's click on this arc again. Let's look at these properties. And now they are shown as architectural values. Obviously, there will be no change in the angles. It's still shown as decimal. And here we have this arc length area and all the remaining values. So in this way, you can toggle between the decimal, architectural or any other remaining options like the engineering fractional or scientific and you can view the values in that unit format so this is not changing the unit of your actual drawing this is simply changing the format in which the unit will be displayed so now let's close this properties palette 
and I'll go to the customization and I'll deactivate this units option and let's click on this quick properties option now now using this quick properties option you can bring a small property palette for every object now let's say that we want the property palette for all of these objects which we select so for that simply click on this quick properties and that will activate the quick property option now click on any of the object and this small property palette with some of the important properties or frequently used properties will get listed here for example the radius the coordinates of center point layer and all the other information so you will learn more about this property palette later on in the upcoming modules so let's close it once again and let's deactivate this quick properties option and i'll press escape key so that was all about the selection cycling and other status bar options which are really helpful and they can be used according to your preferences to make your drawing workflow easier. Okay, so here is your question related to the module. Now in this case, you need to make this drawing using all of the commands which you have learned so far. So I'll start this geometry using a rectangle tool. So I'll go to the draw panel, select the flyout and select this rectangle tool. Now click anywhere in the drawing area and then I'll make the rectangle. For making rectangle, I'll type add and then length of rectangle, which is 10. So right now you can see in this drawing that the length is nine units from the first center point of the fillet to the second center point but the radius of this fillet is 0.5 that means we have 0.5 unit towards left and also 0.5 towards right that makes a total of 10 unit so that's the length similarly the width is 4 unit and 0.5 towards upward and 0.5 towards downward will add up to make it of 5 unit length so i'll type 5 as width now here we have it now press enter so that's the rectangle which we need now in this rectangle we need to add fillets first so to add the fillet go to this fillet tool select the radius and the radius is of 0.5 units so let's type 0 0.5 and press enter now we need to apply it on all of these vertices so i'll simply select polyline click on any of these lines and there we have it now we'll add the geometry which is at the center of this rectangle and for that i'll go to the line tool now click on this midpoint and make a line with length of 2.5 units and press enter so that will end exactly at the center now i'll go to circle click at this point and make a circle with radius of three units and press enter press enter again go to the same point and make another circle with radius of 1.6 and press enter now we don't need this line also we don't need this portion so i'll trim it so select trim press enter click on this part and click on this part so this portion is complete now let's move on to the next portion here we need to add another line with length of two units so i'll click on this midpoint and i'll enter a length of two unit and press enter press enter again to exit this command now we need to go to circle tool and click on this end point and make a circle with radius of 0.6 unit press enter press enter again and this time again go to the same point and make another circle with radius of one unit and press enter now we need to make a circle which is tangent on this circle and tangent on this line so i'll go to the fly out select tangent tangent radius and I'll click at this point, then at this point and enter a radius of one unit and press enter. There we have it. Now we need to trim it. So I'll go to trim tool, press enter, click on this point and there we have it. Now we can make a mirror image. So I'll go to mirror, select this portion, press enter, click on this midpoint and click on the center, press enter again. So now we don't need this part also we don't need this portion so i'll go to trim tool press enter and remove this portion now we need to make a mirror image of this on this side so i'll select it all go to mirror tool click on the center of this circle and midpoint of this horizontal line and simply press enter there we have it the mirror image now we need to add a final detail and we can add it by removing these two parts so i'll go to trim press enter remove this portion 
and remove this portion and press enter. So that's the final drawing which we were required to make. So now let's have a look at some of the drawing tools of AutoCAD and we'll start it with the rectangular array command. So here we have a set of objects which is the desk arrangement of an office chair and PC and we want to make multiple copies of this object in such a way that it looks like the floor arrangement of an office space. For that I will select the array tool. So go to the modify panel select the rectangular array now select the complete set of objects from which you want to create the array now press enter and here you will see a default array which you may or may not want now in this case you can increase number of objects in the row as well as in columns and you can do that dynamically by using these multi-function grips so here we have these grips now let's select this end grip in the horizontal direction and I'll move it towards right and you'll notice that number of objects will increase along with this grip. Similarly, you can increase number of objects in the column or in the height direction using the same grip. So let's now move it upwards and here we have it. So now more objects are added here. Now what if you want to change the gap between these rows and columns? For that you can use these grips. So here I can click on this grip and move it closer and the gap will decrease. Similarly I can click on this grip and I can decrease or increase the gap. So that's a dynamic way of changing the values but you can also do it accurately using the array creation tab. So you'll see this array creation tab as long as the command is active. And here we have some of the options like we have number of columns, rows and levels. So let's start with number of columns, which is currently seven. So let's change this value to eight. Now press tab key. Okay. Now after that, we have the spacing between these columns, which is set to two, three, eight, seven units. Now, what if we want these objects to remain very close to each other. For that, we need to change this value. We need to decrease it actually. So I'll change it to 1500. Now press tab key again, and now they are touching each other. So that's the arrangement which I want. Now the total distance will automatically adjust depending upon the number of objects or number of columns here. Now let's move on to rows. So here we have these four rows. Let's change it to three. And now we have here the gap between different rows which is 2696 units so let's increase it a little bit and i'll change it to 3000 units press tab key and the total distance will change accordingly and here we have the new gap here now we have the levels and levels are simply the number of objects in the z axis which will not be visible as long as you are in this 2d space and we have this associative option so you can keep this option checked if you want to keep this array editable and if you want that the array should not remain editable then keep on this option unchecked but now I'll keep it checked and let's now click on close array so here we have this complete set of object as a single array now even when you click on any of these objects from this array the complete set will be selected and the array tab will appear with these options now you can again modify the values in this row and column and you also have some of the additional options here. So using these options, you can even modify it further. For example, let's say that we want to add some extra part in this source object. So for that, we can select this edit source option. And now select the item on which you want to make the modification. So I'll select this object here. And let's click on OK. So here we have this array. Now we can modify it. So in order to modify it, I'll select the circle tool and I'll make a small circle here. So that will act as a small gap here, which is used for the cables in the table. And I'll copy it over here as well. Okay. Now this is the final geometry and the same set of object will be visible here. So as soon as you add any modification in the source object, the change will be propagated in all the added objects here everywhere. Now, in order to save this, go to this last panel and click on save changes. And here we have it. The changes are saved and now all the added elements are now similar. In these cases, the gap between the array row and array column is simply the gap between any two corresponding points. So in the initial case, we have applied array row gap of 
3000 units which is the gap between any two corresponding points so for example if you take this top left point as any reference point then the distance between this top left and the second top left point will be 3000 units similarly for the columns the corresponding distance between the points will be equal to the gap which you have specified so here we have this top left corner so the gap between this top left corner and the top left corner of the second object will be equal to 1500 units which we have specified so this was all about the rectangular array tool of autocad in this video i will tell you about the polar array tool of autocad so in the previous case we have seen the rectangular array and using the rectangular array you are able to add objects in the rectangular direction in the horizontal and vertical direction using the polar array you can add objects along a circular circumference for example here we have this circular table and we have this chair let's say that we want to add multiple chairs along the circumference of this table for that we can use the polar array so on the modify panel expand the flyout the array flyout and select this polar array now you need to select the objects so here is the object select it and we want to make an array from this object so select press enter now you need to specify the center point of array so the center point of array will be the center point of this circle and now here we have it a default array in this case so again we need to change the objects and here in this case we have these six objects but we want eight objects so let's click here and let's now change it to eight objects and press tab key now we have eight objects here in this case now the angle between all of these objects is automatically calculated and here it is 45 degrees and also the total angle is 360 degrees but you may or may not want this value let's say that we want to fill this complete set of chairs in between the three quadrants we don't want any chair in this quadrant let's say and for that i'll simply change this value to 270 and then press the tab key and now here we have it so now the chairs are arranged all of the eight chairs but they are arranged in between the 270 degree angle and we don't have any chair in this quadrant if you want to change this value back then simply select 360 degree angle now they are completely filled here similarly we have the number of rows which is one you can change it to two or three or whatever value you want but obviously in this case we don't want these many rows so i'll simply change it to one once again and the level is simply the number of objects in the z-axis which will not be visible in this case now if you recall the previous case we have made an associative array in case of rectangular array and using the associative option we were able to modify the array even after creating that so we will again keep this option checked in this case we will make it associative and later on we will modify some of the objects in this array also now we have an option here which is rotate items so currently the objects are completely aligned towards center so all of these objects are simply rotating but what if you don't want that for that simply click on this rotate items and now you can see that the original object and its configuration will be retained for all of its array copies so if you want this kind of array you can keep this unchecked but we don't want this so i'll keep it checked so that the chairs are aligned towards center and now click on close array so now we can again modify this set of array and for that i'll select the array and click on edit source and once again i'll click on this object select the array click on ok if this message appears and let's modify it so i'll add a circle here and you'll see that the same circle is added on all its copies now i'll save the array and here we have it now even if you want to change any single object from this array you can do that also so i'll select the array once again and now i'll select this replace item and now we need a replacement item for this so we need to first insert an object so i'll select this block here now we'll learn about these blocks later on and for now just make a mental note of this so here we have this object now once again i need to go to the array so select the array again go to this replace item and now select the replacement object which is this one and now press enter now you need to specify the base point of replacement object which is somewhere in the middle here now we need to specify the array 
object which you want to replace so let's replace this chair so i'll select this chair and select the array and here we have it the replacement object is added now simply press enter and press enter again to exit this you can also close this array now we have two objects here and we need to delete the original array object so i'll select this one it is it and now here we have it so now this copy is a part of new array and it has been added as a replacement we can now erase this object also it's no longer required so in this way you can replace any copy of this array from the complete set now in this case if you select any single element of this array all the objects will be selected because while making the array we kept it as associative now if you want to make these objects completely separate from one another then you need to explode the complete array and you can explode it simply by pressing the x key on the command line and then pressing enter so that will explode it and you can also use the explode tool here so that will also explode the same set of array so both are simply same tools you can use the command equivalent x or you can use this icon here now if you click on any of the object only that object will be selected and also this array is no longer associative and hence we cannot modify it further but you can obviously replace objects you can remove them you can add extra objects if you want for example here but it will not remain a part of an array so this was all about the polar array tool of autocad in this video i will tell you about the path array tool of autocad and for explaining this i'll use this geometry now here we have this simple spline and that will simply represent the horizon of our ground and here we have a palm tree block now if you want to make multiple copies of this palm tree along this path then you can use path array and for similar conditions also you can use the path array so when you expand this fly out you'll see this path array tool now select it and select the object which is this one and now press enter now you need to select the path and here we have this path so select it and here we have it all the objects are now added along that path now once again here also we have the similar options which we have seen in the rectangular and polar array but in this case there is a slight difference in this number of items now here you'll see that number of item cannot be changed and here it is set to 14 by default but we can change the distance between number of items so let's now change this distance value to 4000 and press tab key so now we are able to change the distance between items but what if we want to change number of items for that simply go to the properties panel select this major flyout and change it to divide and now you will see that number of items can be changed but the gap between items cannot be changed so you can keep any of these options active at a time so if one of the option is active the second one will automatically become deactivated so in this case we have total number of items as 10 so let's now change it to 8 and press tab key here we have it now we have number of rows which is set to 1 obviously in this case also if you want to add more rows you can do that so let's type 3 press tab key and here we have it which is quite confusing in this case we don't want these many rows so that will simply make it look very unnatural so I'll type 1 again and here we have it again the levels that can be added in the z direction and we have the associative option so as long as you keep this associative option checked you will be able to modify this array even after making it but in this case i'll keep it unchecked now again we have the align items option and using this align items option you can align all of these objects according to the geometry of this curve so here let's say that we don't want to align these objects we want the same orientation of this initial object or this primary object for all of our copies of this array for that simply click on this to uncheck and now we have all of these objects in the same alignment as the primary object but if you want to align them according to the geometry then click on this align items and here we have it so i'll keep it aligned that looks a little bit better and now i'll close the array so here we have the final array now if you click on any of these objects they will be individually selected and they are no longer a part of an array because we have not selected the associative option so if you want to keep it modifiable if you want to modify these arrays even after making them then ensure that associative option is checked 
so i'll press escape key and that's the final array so this was all about the path array tool of autocad in this video i will tell you about the divide and measure tool of autocad and using these tools you can divide the object in equal number of parts or at a particular distances so here we have these two simple geometries the first one is a line and this one is an spline now let's assume that we want to divide this line at first in equal number of parts and we'll divide it into six equal segments for that go to this draw panel expand it and select the divide tool now select the object which you want to divide in this case the line now look at the command line which prompts you to specify number of segments so we want to divide it into six equal segments so type six and press enter and now the object has been divided into six different parts and they are all equal but we are not able to see any change we still have a single line actually the object is divided using the points and the points are not visible in this case so we need to change the type of points in order to see them clearly and the point type can be changed using the p type command so type p type press enter and now change it to any other visible type of point so i'll select this cross point type now click on ok and here we have it so now you can see that five points are added to divide this complete segment into six parts so we have the first second third fourth fifth and sixth segment here so it is divided into six different parts similarly if you want to divide this is spline you can select the same command so i'll expand it select the divide tool now select the object and enter number of segment let's add nine press enter we have here nine equal segments so although in line we can measure the complete length of line and then we can manually calculate the distances after which we need to add the points but in case of a spline the same calculation will become very tedious and for these situations this command will become very helpful now let's press ctrl z to get back to this original geometry so now what if instead of number of divisions we want to divide this object at equal intervals so for that we can select the second option which is measure select this tool and now click on the line now the command line will prompt you to specify the length after which you want to add the division points so let's assume that we want to add the points after every 40 unit on this line so type 40 and press enter and now here we have it so the line is divided into as many parts as possible by creating segments of 40 unit length so the first segment is of 40 unit 40 40 40 40 but the last segment will be of the remaining length and whatever that length might be now in this case while selecting the line i have clicked at a point which is close to this end that's why the measurement is started from this point now if you want the measurement to start from this point so that the first segment over this side is of 40 length and the rest of the thing will follow in this direction and the last segment will be of any residual length then you need to ensure that you click somewhere close to this point to make this clear i'll erase all of these points and now once again i'll select the measure tool and now i'll select this object but this time while selecting the object i'm clicking close to this end point now the measurement will start from here and enter distance as 40 press enter and now you can clearly see that the measurement started from this side and this segment is of any residual length similarly you can use the same method for this spline i'll expand the draw panel select the measure tool select this object and this time i'm selecting a point which is close to this endpoint so obviously the measurement will start from here so click here and now enter the distance as 60 press enter and now the first distance is 60 60 60 but this segment will be of any remaining length so in this way you can divide autocad objects in equal number of segments or with a specific distance using the divide and measure tools In this video, I will tell you about the multi-function grip tool of AutoCAD. So up to this point, we have made many drawings and whenever we select any drawing or any object in AutoCAD, we were able to see these grips. So these are the different points on the geometry and which are represented by these blue dots and they are visible on almost all of the geometries. Here also, when I select the circle, we have these different grips. 
and using these grips we can make multiple modifications in the geometry for example here we have this rectangle which is made with a simple polyline and I'll select it so that the grips are visible now go to any of these grips the end grips and when I hover my cursor there you'll see these extra options which are available in the menu now you can use this stretch vertex you can stretch it just like this or you can even add a vertex so select this add vertex and add a new vertex here just like this now let's say that we want to remove this one so that this vertex and this vertex joins with a single line so again I'll hover my cursor select the remove vertex and here we have it now if I move my cursor to this grip I'll have even more options so we have this stretch the obvious one and also we have the add vertex option which we have already seen but we also have a new option which is convert to arc so let's select it and now we can convert this object or this polyline into an arc so this part of polyline is now converted into an arc now we can again go to this and we can convert it to a line again so we have this convert to line select it and here we have it now that is not all about the multi-function grips you can select multiple grips in a drawing using the shift key so let's say that in this case we want to select two grips on the end of this rectangle for that I'll select this rectangle and now we'll select both of these grips directly so for selecting them simply press and hold the shift key now click on the grip which you want to select in this case I've selected this now its color changes to red now click on the second grip which you want to select and now both of these grips are selected now release the shift key click on any of these grips and you can now modify them like this Similarly, you can also directly click on the grip and modify the geometry according to your requirement. So I'll press Ctrl Z to get back to the original geometry. Now using grips, you can also modify your geometry in many different ways. For example, on the modify panel, we have multiple tools like scale, stretch, move and copy or rotate. And we have used these tools from modify panel, but instead of selecting them from modify panel and using them from here, you can directly use the grips and use them. Now, in this case, we have this complete geometry. Let's say that we want to modify it using the grips for that. I'll select it. Now select the grip, which you want to make as a base point. So I'll select this grip as the base point and now click on it now as soon as you will click on it you'll see on the command line here let's expand this command line to see it even more clearly that we have an extra option here is stretch which is enclosed in these star symbols now the current command which is active in this case is a stretch and you can obviously see that we can stretch the object now press a space bar or enter and the command will change to move as you can see here on the command line and now we'll be able to move the object now I'll once again press enter and it changes to rotate and the grip on which we have clicked will become the base point for rotation press enter again and now we can scale it you can enter the scale factor right now on the command line in order to change its size and press enter again we have the mirror tool so now we can mirror it along this mirroring line or whatever the mirror line which you specify press enter again and we are back to stretch now in this case we were able to change the geometry for this rectangle only what if you also want to change the geometry for the circle along with this for that you need to select the complete set of objects and now select the grip so let's select this grip in this case and once again we have the stretch press enter we have the move tool but in this case the complete set of object will move we have the rotate and complete set of object will rotate although the change in the rotation for the circle will not be visible press enter we have the scale and now we can scale the complete set of geometry we have the mirror tool we can obviously mirror it we have again the stretch which is back to the first condition so in this way we can use these modify tools directly using the multi-function grips as well and obviously we have the option of changing the geometry directly by clicking the multi-function grip also so this was all about the multi-function grip tool of AutoCAD in this video I will tell you about the align command of AutoCAD and using the align command you can move an object and also align its geometry according to your requirement now in this case we have this simple geometry here and we have this door block now let's say that we want to move this door block 
on this part of the geometry and we want to move it in such a way that it completely aligns with this wall or this geometry and it also remains inside this geometry so obviously we can do that using the move and rotate tool and that will take a couple of steps but you can do that directly using a single command so expand the modify panel select the align tool here now select the complete set of object which you want to move and press enter now specify the first point on the source object so here the first point is this one this end point here so i'll select this one now specify the first destination point so we want this point to touch this point on the geometry so now obviously that is the first point it will move to this point now we need to specify the second source point now the second source point is this one and we want this to touch this line so you can select any other point on this line so i'll select the midpoint you don't need to be very concerned about the point here i just simply need to click at a point on this line so now this point will end up somewhere on this line now we need to select the third point which is let's select this one as the third point and you need to specify third point here so the third point will decide the direction so we want to place it inside so i'll click somewhere inside and here we have it the final geometry now in this case you can clearly see that the first point is here where we clicked the second point was the midpoint and obviously i said that by clicking the midpoint we are essentially assigning this line as the second point so here the second point has been assigned and the third point decided the direction whether inside or outside and here we have it the object not only moved but also properly aligned according to the geometry and using this tool you can also align similar kind of geometries on different objects so that was the align tool of autocad in this video i will tell you about finding distance radius angle and coordinates from the simple autocad geometries and for that i will use this simple 2d drawing now here in this drawing we have the circle arc simple lines and also the slant line and we will find different properties of this geometry using the inquiry commands the inquiry commands are simply the commands which can be used to find these values and you can find those commands here on the utilities panel so go to this utilities panel and here you will see this flyout from this flyout select the distance option first so you can also start this distance tool from the di command now once the command is active click on the first point from where you want to start distance measurement and in this case we want to start distance measurement from this point now click on the end point which is this one in this case and we have our results over the command line now expand this command line and here you'll see that the distance is 28 units also the angle in xy plane is 35 unit that means the angle which this inclined line is making with respect to the positive side of x-axis so if a line is drawn here in a completely horizontal way then the angle which this line is making with that line is 35 unit also we have some additional values like the delta value the delta x y and z so that simply means that the coordinate value of the final point when subtracted with the coordinate of the initial point will have this result so the x coordinate of this point minus x coordinate of this point will be 22.9363 unit similarly the y coordinate of this point minus y coordinate of this point will be of this value now to exit this command simply press escape key in a similar way you can use other options of this flyout to find other values for example here we have the radius select the radius and now select an arc or circle so here we have the circle let's click on it and we have the radius and not only the radius we also have the diameter of this circle similarly you can repeat the radius tool simply by selecting the radius option from the command line here also and now click on this arc and the radius is 6 unit the diameter is 12 unit for this arc so let's now press escape key to get back to the geometry and now we'll go to the utilities panel and select the remaining options so the next option is angle now when you want to find only the angle of any line then you can select this command now in this case you can select the geometry and i'm selecting this line and 
select the second line or the second geometry with respect to which you want to find the angle. So I'll select this one. And now the angle in between these two geometries is 125 degrees as mentioned here. So the included angle on this side, the smaller side will be 125 degrees. Now let's repeat it once again. So I'll select this angle. Now I'll select this line and I'll click on this line. And here in this case, the included angle here will be 145 degrees. So in this way, you can find angle between other geometries as well. Now using the inquiry commands, you can also find the coordinate values of any geometry. For example, in this case, we don't know the coordinate of the center of this circle. And if you want to find that out, simply go to the utilities panel and select this ID point option. You can also use its command equivalent, which is ID. And now click at the point for which you want to find the coordinates. So click here. And now here we have the coordinate value, the X value, the Y value, and obviously the Z value will be zero as we are dealing with X and Y axis only in this case. So in this way, you can find distance, radius, angle, and coordinate values of any geometry using the inquiry tools. Finding area from your AutoCAD drawing is one of the frequent tasks which is always done by almost everyone. And in AutoCAD, you can find area of different objects in many different ways. But in this video, I will tell you about finding areas using the inquiry tools. So here we have these two simple geometries. And now we'll find the enclosed area of this complete shape and also this one using the inquiry tool. And for that, once again, I'll go to the utilities panel. And from here, I'll select the area tool. So in the previous video, we have seen these inquiry tools. And now in this video, I'll tell you about this area tool. So select this area tool. And now you need to specify the area in your drawing. So here I'll select this geometry first. Now let's say that we want to find the area of this complete geometry. And for that, I'll start with any point. Now click at the second point, then the third point, fourth, and the fifth. Now we have this green window and the complete area which is enclosed in this green window can be seen directly using this command. So now let's press enter and here we have it. So the area is 6896.7586 square units and the perimeter is 330.7268 units. So whatever the unit you are using, if you are using mm that will be millimeter square. If you are using inches that will be inches square. So the area will depend upon the unit which you are using. Now, in this case, the geometry was quite simple. So we selected the coordinate points and we found out the area. But in this case, we cannot find the area simply by clicking because we have an arg here. Now let's ignore this circle for a moment. I'll press escape key and I'll try to find the area of this complete outer geometry. We will simply ignore this circle for now. Now, once again, I'll go to utilities panel and I'll select the area. Now, instead of selecting the points from this drawing, select this object option. Now click on it and simply click on the object. Now for clicking on this object, you need to ensure that this complete object is made with a single unit, a single polyline or region, and it should be connected because you cannot use this tool for finding area of this geometry. Because in this case, obviously we have these connected lines, but this line is not connected and hence we won't be able to find the area in this case. So simply click on this geometry and the complete area is selected, including the circle. Now we have the results here. So the area is 11179.5179 square units and the perimeter is here 433.9930 units. Now, obviously, there must be situations where we don't want to find the area of this circle. We want to exclude the area of this circle from this complete area. In those cases, you can use the subtract tool. So let's press escape key. And once again, I'll go to the area. And now here, look at the command line. So we have some options here like add area, subtract area. So select the subtract area first and now click on object and click on this circle. Now you'll see that the color of this circle is different. And whenever you'll find the complete area, the area of this circle will be removed from that. Now press enter. Now go to the command line and select this add area option. And once again, click on object and select this object. 
so now the final area can be seen here so the total area was this and the area of the circle has been removed from that and the remaining area is 8828.9054 unit which is the area of this green portion excluding the area of this circle now press enter so in this way you can find area of different geometries using the area command or the area inquiry tool of AutoCAD in this video I will tell you about making isometric drawings in AutoCAD and isometric drawings are simply 2D drawings but they look like a 3D drawing and generally the angle on which the axis is inclined for making an isometric drawing is 30 degrees so in this case we have this drawing which is an isometric drawing obviously and although it looks like a 3D drawing it's actually a 2D drawing and we'll learn about making this same geometry here so for making the isometric drawing it is always advisable to keep the grid on and you can click on the first object snap option here to make the grid on now this is the normal grid here the orthographic grid and in order to convert it into an isometric grid or in order to convert the drawing area into an isometric drawing area you need to select the iso draft option so you can select the iso draft option and select the appropriate value or you can simply click on this ISO draft or isometric draft mode from the status bar so now click on it and the grid will change to any one of the isometric planes so just right beside this ISO draft status bar option you'll see these three planes so we have the ISO plane right the top and left now depending upon your selection the ISO plane may look like any of these three so we will first start with this isoplane top and make sure that this isoplane top is selected so you can change these isometric planes from this status bar option or you can also press the f5 function key to change them just like this so now we are on the isoplane top let's start making this geometry and for making that i'll select the polyline tool now click anywhere in the drawing area to start this geometry and make sure it goes towards this direction the 30 degree angle should be visible on the tooltip now enter the length which is 50 and press enter now move your cursor towards this side and once again a distance of 100 unit and press enter now move it towards left again type 50 press enter now join it with the starting point here and press enter so now we have this closed rectangle so let's select it now go to the copy tool click on any of its vertices move it downwards and enter a distance of 40 unit and press enter now press enter again to exit the command now i'll select the line tool and i'll join all of these vertices so join these vertices press enter and repeat it go to these vertices join them and join these vertices okay so now we have these geometries now we will make this part of this isometric drawing and for that i'll once again select the line tool and i'll click on the midpoint of this line now move it towards this direction and enter a distance of 30 unit and press enter now move it towards this side and click at this intersection point now move it downwards and enter a distance of 20 unit press enter then move it towards left and join it with this point okay so here we have these geometries now we need to clean this drawing a little bit and for cleaning that we can use the trim tool so go to the modify panel select the trim tool press enter now we'll remove this part this part and this part also we'll remove these parts of the drawing carefully and just like this so we have cleaned most of the drawing now we need to add these two lines so again i'll go to the line tool and now click on this point and move it downwards but don't click on any of these points now move your cursor on this point this end point but don't click and now move it once again back to that point and you can zoom into this area now to see it more clearly so let's move it down then go to this point then move backwards and when the intersection point appears for both of these directions click and click on this point so here we have it so we have added this geometry as well so 
the basic structure of our 3D drawing is complete or the 3D isometric drawing is complete. Now we need to add this cylindrical structure and we can add this cylindrical structure only after changing the plane. So we need to make this plane, the isoplane parallel to this plane because that structure is made on this plane. So for that I'll press the F5 key and it will change to isoplane right and that will be the plane on which we will draw this geometry. Now this may look like a circle but actually it's not a circle. For making this geometry we will use the ellipse tool and for isometric drawings you need to use the ellipse tool. So go to this ellipse flyout and select this axis and ellipse. Now look at the command line and we have an option of iso circle. So select this iso circle and now specify the center of this circle which will be at the exact center of this square or this rectangular shape. So I'll go to this midpoint and track it downwards but I'll not click at any point. Now I'll move to this center point and track it on the left side and here we have the center point. Now click and enter the radius which is 15 in this case and press enter. So we have added the circle. Now we need to make a copy of this circle. For that I'll go to the copy command, select the circle press enter, click on the center point, move it in this direction and enter a distance of 50 unit, press enter. Press enter again to exit this command. So we have added both of these circles but now we need to add these two lines. And for adding these two lines, select the line tool and go to this circle. Now you'll see this quadrant and if you're not able to see this quadrant, go to the object snap and make sure that this quadrant option is checked. Now click on the quadrant and click on the corresponding quadrant of this circle and press enter. Press enter again to repeat the command and go to this quadrant, then this quadrant and press enter. Now obviously we need to trim the remaining portion of the geometry. So I'll select the trim tool, press enter and trim these geometries. These are no longer required and here we have the final isometric drawing. So in this way you can create isometric drawing by changing the isoplane in AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about the center line and center mark tool of AutoCAD and these are quite new tools which are added in AutoCAD 2017 version. So now here we have a circle, we have a set of parallel lines and a set of intersecting lines. We will start with this circle. Now you can find the center line and center mark tools on the annotate tab. So go to this annotate tab and here you'll see these tools, the center mark and center line on the center lines panel. Now click on this center mark and select a circle or an arc. So in this case we have a circle. So click on the circle and the center mark will be added directly. Now press enter to exit this command. Now the default center mark has been added but you can still modify its settings. So select the center mark and you'll see these grips. Now using these grips you can change the length of this center mark along all of its four sides here just like this. And when the radius of this geometry changes the center mark will automatically change its size just like this. Now in a similar way you can add a center line also. So here we have these two parallel lines. Now in order to add the center line simply select the center line tool, click on the first line, the second line and the center line has been added. And here also the center line will remain connected to its parent lines. So select any of the parent line and change its angle. But when you change its angle the center line will also change accordingly. In a similar way, if you add a center line here on the intersecting line, then it will be added at the angle bisector. Now this will directly bisect the angle which this line is making here. And in this case also, if you change the angle of this line or even if you change the gap between these two lines, the center line will change appropriately, just like this. Now in this case too, if you want to change the length of these lines, you can easily change it by using these grips. You can modify it just like this. And we also have one more command which is ch property command which can be used for changing the property of these objects. So type ch prop and press enter. Now select the center mark or center line 
whose property you want to change. So in this case, I'll select the center mark and now press enter. So we have a set of properties here that can be changed and you can use this chprop command on other geometries also and we'll learn about this command later on in the next module also. So for now we will only change one of the property which is line type scale. So here we have this line type scale. Let's select it and let's change this line type scale to 2. The current value is set to 1. Now press enter and press enter again and you'll notice that the scale of this line now changes and it will now increase. You can compare its scale with these lines here. So you can change some of the properties related to this center mark center line directly using the ch property command. If required, you can also change the properties of these center lines and center mark using the property palette and the property palettes can be seen by selecting the objects and selecting the property option from the contextual menu. Here we have this property palette. So we'll learn about this property palette also later on in the next module. So you can modify its properties from here as well. So this was all about the center mark and center line tool of AutoCAD. So up to this point, we have seen many simple 2D geometries in AutoCAD, for example, line, polyline, arc, circles, and ellipses. There is also a different kind of geometry in AutoCAD, which is called region. And you can make region using the completely closed geometries. So let's make simple geometries here. I'll make a geometry with this circle tool and another one with this rectangle. Also, I'll make a geometry using this line command here. Now, in this case, if you select these geometries, you'll see the normal grips and also the behavior of this object will be of a polyline because it's made up of a polyline. Now, if you select the circle here, also we have the simple grips. You can modify these objects like this using these grips and its behavior will be very much similar to that of a circle. In this case, obviously we have these separate lines. You can select them and their behavior will be something like that of a line. Now, once we convert these objects into region, their behavior will completely change. And in order to convert it into region, you can use its command equivalent REGION, that's region, or you can go to this draw panel, expand it and select the region tool. Now I'll select this region tool and now click on this circle and press enter. So now this object has been converted into a region. Although we still have the circle just right behind this, but we now have a new object also here. Now here in this case, we have a simple polyline. Let's convert this one into also a region. So I'll select the region. I'll click on this and press enter. We again have a new region here. Now I'll convert this object into a region. In this case, you can see that we can select it separately. Let's now go to region tool and select all of these objects and press enter. Now, when I move my cursor, you can see that we have a region here as seen on the tooltip and the complete geometry will be selected. So in all of these three cases, we had completely closed geometry. That's why I was able to convert them into region. And that's one of the conditions which needs to be fulfilled for converting an object into a region. Okay, so now we have the regions. Let's look at the difference here. So I'll select this object and obviously I select the region and I'll simply move it from this point. So I'll select the grip and move it here. Now that's the region and this is simple line geometry which we initially had. Now in this case, the object will behave as a rigid geometry. As you can see that I can move it directly using my grips. Even in this case, I have this region and if I move it, I can simply move it using my grips. It's completely rigid shape. But in this case, the original rectangle, if you move it with these grips, it will deform, it will stretch and it will behave accordingly. So that's one of the differences. Now, another difference between a region and a common geometry is the ability to perform Boolean operations. So I'll explain it in a moment. For that, I'll just clean this drawing area. So I have this region. Also, I'll select the circle and I'll separate this region. Now I'll remove all of these geometries. They are no longer required. Now we have this circle, which is a region and also this rectangle, which is a region. Now I'll move them one over another in this overlapping position just like this and let's make 
three copies so go to copy tool and the second copy and third copy now all of these objects are made with region now let's select the union tool the first boolean operation so i'll type union and press enter now you need to select the first object and the second object and press enter and look at the geometry now so both of these geometries now combined and they combine to form a single region like this which is a completely rigid shape just like this okay now let's type subtract and press enter so that's the second boolean operation now for subtract you need to first select the object which you want to retain in this case we want to retain this object press enter now click on the object which you want to subtract now in this case when i select the rectangle this portion the common portion of rectangle and circle will be subtracted and also this remaining part of the rectangle will be erased so let's select it press enter and here we have it now this part has been removed and also the remaining object has been removed because we selected the circle initially now let's reverse the process i'll press ctrl z and i'll type subtract again and now in this case i'll select this rectangle first now press enter select the circle and you obviously know what will happen this time here we have it the circle will be removed from this rectangle or this rectangular region now in this case i'll use the third boolean operation which is intersect so let's type intersect now in this case only the common portion of intersecting geometries will be retained so i'll select the first object the second one both of them are regions press enter and we only have the common region from both of these geometries so in this way we can use the boolean operations on the region objects and that's all about the region tool okay so now this model is complete let's make this drawing using all the tools which we have learned so far and for making this we are going to use the array tool to be specific we'll use the circular array which we have learned here so i'll start with the circle command so i'll go to draw panel select the flyout and select the center radius circle now click at any point in the drawing area to start it and enter a radius of two unit and press enter now press enter again to repeat this command and go to the same center and this time enter a radius of five unit and press enter so there we have it two concentric circles now we need to go to the circle tool again click on this quadrant and now again make another circle with radius of 0.8 unit and press enter now we need to trim this part so i'll go to trim tool press enter and remove this portion now we need to make the array so go to the fly out here and select polar array now click on this part press enter and now click on the center which is here so in this drawing we have 11 instances and in total we need to make 12 instance because one of that is removed and the groove has been made instead of that so i'll select here 12 as number of items and press enter so here we have it now make sure associative is unchecked and then click on close array now we need to clean this geometry so i'll go to trim press enter and remove these portions they are no longer required in this geometry okay so now we need to make the final groove here so i'll simply erase this portion it is no longer required here and here we have already trimmed this portion which we should not have trimmed so in order to extend it you can go to the modify panel and here select the extend tool and press enter now click on this portion and there we have it it is now extended back okay so now i'll go to the line tool click on the center and make a straight line it should be long enough to pass this circle completely now go to offset and enter an offset distance of 0.5 and press enter now click on this line and click upwards then click on this line and click downwards and press enter now go to trim tool press enter and remove this complete portion and this complete portion also zoom into this area remove this part and remove this part 
Now remove this line, it's no longer required. And there we have it, the final geometry as per the dimensions mentioned here.